We're here at KubeCon 2018 in Seattle, Washington, and we've stopped by the Stack Rocks booth. Can you tell us a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at KubeCon? Yeah, so I'm Ali Golshan. I'm the co-founder CTO. Uh, Stackworks was founded roughly about four years ago, January 2015. Uh, the whole premise of the company was that we needed to build a whole new security solution to deal with cloud native containers and microservices. Um, one of the early bets that we made as a company was heavily focusing on Kubernetes. So take a lot of that traditional complexity and security and manage that through the cloud native infrastructure in Kube. Uh, the company is uh, roughly about 50 people. Uh, we have you know, our 2.0 product that came out about six months ago, currently on a 2.3 product. And we have customers across finance, uh, technology, media, entertainment, and government. And how do you fit into the Kubernetes ecosystem, and are there any specific problems that you solve? Yeah, so our product spans the entire build, deployment, and runtime lifecycle of a container and application security. So at build time, we ensure we do things like risk analysis, vulnerability management, at deployment configuration, network management, and compliance, at runtime threat detection, automation of response and forensics, and create a huge feedback loop. So the information and the asset information at build and deployment can be shared at runtime. Runtime information can correctly go back to the right developer teams and ops teams using the existing workflow. So we integrate heavily into the CI CD pipeline um, and into your existing workflow. Um, and this is where we heavily integrate into Kubernetes. Uh, so we leverage Kubernetes and Istio and the entire service mesh for various functions like segmentation, firewalling, um, and additional functions like response and collection. Uh, this is an area where we've decided to make deep integration into Kube to hide a lot of that traditional security complexity and make sure we operate very kind of standard and from a first order citizen in a cloud native environment. And where would you see the industry going over the next 12 to 18 months? So some of the big beliefs we have, which is kind of the core concepts around the product, is we think that as we move forward, everything in user space will run in some sort of an isolated fashion. Um, companies will start to and continue to whittle down the kernel and the host into the least privileged, least amount of tools and packages and access. So we think that that orchestration layer will become the source of truth or the new operating system. We think Kube will become that. And we think as we look forward over the next 12 to 18 months, one of the big signals we're seeing from our customers is um, more and more customers are looking to offload a lot of the functionality that was traditional firewalling or WAF or proxying um, to this native infrastructure. So more and more of adoption I think we're going to see of service mesh for the networking side of things, um, as well as more adoption of um, some serverless functions at runtime for the more lightweight functions that we're going to see. So those are the two major trends we're seeing over the next 12 to 18 months. And would it be possible for us to take a look at the product, maybe get a demo? Yeah, absolutely. So our main focuses in the product are really around five different use cases, vulnerability management, uh, con compliance, uh, best practices, uh, configuration and network management, detection and incident response, and forensics and investigation. So I'll walk you through the demo at the highest level. When you land into the product at the dashboard, uh, there's a number of different metrics around risk and what you're actually exposed to that the customer can actually see. So if you look at the main dashboard, this is where we can show you exact vulnerabilities from a standpoint of criticality. So is this vulnerability really in my production environment? Is it active, actually actively violating any production uh, policies? Um, am I seeing any malicious activity, any tools or packages or networking configurations that should not be in my environment, all the way down to the highest risky deployments that are currently in my production or anywhere in my inf infrastructure? Um, now, one of the main things about the product itself is uh, we have a huge reliance and integration in Kubernetes itself. The reason we do that, as we talked about, is, is to be able to, out of the box, configure firewalling layer 3, layer 7, and give you an entire control and configurability around your network. So the way we do that is making it very simple, but having an entire network tab where we interface with Kubernetes, and we can extract all this information and present it to the user. So we can show you exactly deployments, and we're not image-centric. We take a look at the deployment. We can tell you if it has access to the outside world, active, allowed, and an entire mapping of what these services can do, as well as the entire asset and inventory information around it. So from here on end, what you can get is a very deep understanding of what the product itself can do from a networking standpoint. 
Beyond that, you want to be able to then create better visibility, better hygiene, and better practices around your compliance or your general policies. So from here, we can dive deep into the, uh, into the violations. So I can see all the violations that are currently in my environment and why they're violating something. So if I were to jump into this, you would see additional details around it. As part of that, we have our entire compliance workflow. So you can run compliance best, mar uh, best practices, benchmarks, and CIS benchmarks against your entire deployments. You can see the entire risk scoring in your environment from top priority to the lowest. And we include the entire asset and inventory information required from the build and deployment process. And at the end of it, you can still take a look at the images, see the vulnerabilities that are packed into each one, see the additional details around each one, um, all the way to secrets management, where your secrets are, how they're deployed, how they're being managed. And then the last part of it, which is really configurations. So all the policies that come out of the uh, product ready to go directly integrated into Kube and Service Mesh, um, as well as a whole bunch of integrations. And this is a sample of integrations we have, partially because it's very quick to be able to add these integrations under the hood. So that's a little bit of an overview of the Stackrocks product at this point. And where can they go if they want to find out more information about Stackrocks? And, and yeah, so we recommend just going to stackrocks.com. We have plenty of resources, tools, and direct reach out to us where we can follow up. And typically our product takes roughly between five to 10 minutes to install and, uh, and run and we offer customers uh, free risk assessment. So it's a very easy way for them to test the product um, from our website, and then from there, we typically take it however they want. Awesome, well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VMblog. Yeah, thank you for having me.